Okay, Z87, my favorite motherboard. I told you it was going to be your favorite, didn't I? If you remember. Yep. Yes. The WS. I said it was going to be hard to choose, but I said the WS was going to be pretty it, awesome. It actually wasn't that hard to choose. After, yeah. after I got it and started playing around with it, the WS was my favorite Z87 motherboard, the full size. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really liked uh, the impact a lot. I really liked yeah. the gene a lot just because mm -hmm. of the, the, what you fit into the form factor. But um, what do we have here? So this is the Z97WS, and uh, we've really taken every single thing that we did in the previous generation, and we've just upped the ante. So um, I've been really impressed by what the WS team has done for this generation. And, you know, once again, to kind of recover segmentation, you know, for you guys that are always wondering about is so what's the WS series all about? You know, we have, of course, the three other divisions. We have our mainstream series, our tough, and we have our ROG series. And with WS, it's really focused at the prosumer, the professional, um, S&B Soho space, so, you know, small business, small home office kind of environment, or, you know, uh, like I said, the prosumer, somebody that's maybe doing videography work, you know, uh, content creation, audio, video, image editing, maybe is first and foremost more using their system for productivity and for work than they might be using it for, you know, personal enjoyment, right? Yeah. Um, but that being said, you know, it can equally make for a great platform just as a whole. So, you know, we've got gamers and enthusiasts and tweakers, tuners, overclockers that love the WS for the high-end uh, expansion capabilities and the high-quality VRM design, as well as, you know, guys that are looking to, you know, maybe do um, uh, financial analysis on the systems or research uh, work on the platform. So it's really got a great deal of flexibility regardless of how you still pursue it. Like always, you're fundamentally regardless if you choose the WS as a great platform, it's going to give you great experience for whatever you're doing. But definitely if you look past that and you look at the functionality and the experience you have, it does kind of get starts to go into a specific direction in terms of there are features and functions that really align with a certain type of usage model. And for this generation, we've definitely gone ahead and elevated on all of those. And so that's what you see right here with the board. So we keep a, a look, I think, that's overall very consistent with the previous generation. I mean, when you look at it, just kind of uh, initially, it looks pretty close to the Z87WS, but you can see that the... Um, color and the overall aesthetic has been kind of updated to align with a little bit softer feel, but we still keep that monolithic um, ID design, which I personally, I really love this actual heatsink design. I think it looks clean, you know, plus it also has outstanding thermal performance, you know, um, and in addition to that, like I said, as a whole, we've gone with a little bit softer color tones, and then from the accenting colors, just like the other mainstream series boards, we've gone with darker tones, right, where we have the dark gray and we have the black, um, but you know, when we get to the VRM, which is always going to be a focal point on VRM-based uh, design for WS, is going to be that we really are actually are looking at the absolute best PWM design and VRM design that we have on any motherboard. Um, even on current RG boards, they won't offer this class of design. Right. Uh, the RG boards is absolutely high-end, but this is actually even a little bit higher end than what we even have on like our Maximus 6 Hero or our uh, Z97 Deluxe. So we've got... Um, this ultra high-end beat uh, thermal chokes, which are the same ones from last generation. So these are fully molded, ultra high amperage, 60 amp rated inductors. Of course, their unique finned nature allow you to have superior thermal uh, dissipation performance. So not only do you get ultra high uh, power output capabilities, but you get great thermal efficiency. Now for the capacitors, you know, traditionally we have 10K rated capacitors like on the high-end boards. Right. Well, for WS this generation, we have 12K rated capacitors. So it's a world's first in terms of introducing 12,000 hour operating uh, capacitors in terms of their lifespan. But in addition, they keep the same benefit just like the 10K rated caps where they have significantly improved temperature tolerances and significantly lower temperature tolerances. Um, the overall MOSFETs and drivers, they're the same ultra high-end international rectifier, fully integrated MOSFET driver packages that we have. So really high voltage tolerance, great thermal efficiency, I mean, overall, just best of the best. So regardless if you're going to run stock, whether you're going to run overclock, whether you want to hammer this board consistently over the long run, whether you're doing, you know, high-end, uh, consistent high-load volume rendering on the platform, the VRM is not going to let you down here. So overall, that's a definite cream of the crop in terms of the design. So moving over to the next, one element that we've gone ahead and proved upon, it might be a little bit hard to catch there, so we'll see if we can get a little bit tighter in, but it's the power connectivity. So if we take a look at uh, your PCIe power, uh, the 8-pin power and the supplemental 8-pin power along with the 24-pin power. If you traditionally look at a normal motherboard, these contacts are going to look hollow. Uh, and they're going to look uh, kind of hard to see if you actually look in on the camera. And if we maybe try to go a little bit tight in on them, we might be able to see it. So let's see if we can go in there. But you can actually see, you can see how you can actually see those a bit more clearly. Um, how they, they, they look actually like complete stems. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why is because they're not hollow. And what we've done for this generation is that those contacts have been, been actually reinforced and they're not hollow base connections. Um, so we've significantly improved the internal composition of those contact points. And this is a new design implementation that we have that's called ProCool. And what we've 
looked at in long-term analysis of how users use WS platforms is that they tend to be under a higher level of load consistently. Yeah. So, you know, 50, 60, 70, 90% consistent loads, especially for longer periods of times because of things like rendering or heavy uh, GPU utilization or even high-end consistent persistent gaming loads. Now, what we've been able to do here is improve not only the temperature performance because these contacts have superior thermal efficiency, so we actually have lower operating uh, temperatures at each one of these connection points, but that also directly uh, ties into the actual efficiency of the power delivery. So we have improved power delivery uh, across all the contact points with lower temperatures. So a subtle change, but overall an additional improvement that we have from previous generations. And does the lower power, uh, I mean the, the, um, the lower temperature, does that actually affect the PCB around it a little it would, bit? Or? It would actually even affect the PCB, you're going to first and foremost notice it most at the contact points. Yeah. So when measured actually with a thermographic imaging camera, we'll see that we significantly reduce uh, the temperature at the internal bridge point in between uh, the connection header and then the actual uh, pin header for the uh, for whatever uh, device you're going to be connecting, right? Like I said, CPU, PCIe, or motherboard power. But even the ambient PCB temperature will be slightly reduced as well. So overall, it's just kind of part of that whole vein of that with WS, we're trying to improve the long-term reliability and thermal performance. Now, in addition to that, of course, um, we've got other performance enhancing technologies like our TPU and our EPU switches. So if we uh, flip the board over right here, of course, you'll see those guys. So that's single, you know, one touch overclocking options for you guys that want to be able to take advantage of that. You can, of course, uh, have a two-stage two uh, TPU switch so that you can go ahead and overclock the system by having either the multiplier be adjusted or the multiplier and the BCLK. If you go in the other direction and flip in the uh, EPU switch, it won't affect performance, it just affects uh, the actual voltage that's being given to the CPU. So clock speeds are the same, but you get lower power consumption, you know, as well as you get a little bit lower uh, load-based temperatures. So you can choose to have efficiency or pure performance. Uh, we also maintain the easy XMP switch that we introduced on uh, the mainstream Z97 series of motherboards. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a great single touch option. So for you guys that want to be able to go ahead and run stock, but maybe ensure that you're at least taking advantage of your XMP, just flip it on the on position, on, on position and you're good to go. You've got the memo K button, which is a great as a troubleshooting mechanism. So for you guys that want to be able to either use it like a semi-clear CMOS, you know, maybe be able to reset frequency, voltage, timing parameters, but not affect all your other settings, or be able to resolve, you know, maybe the issue of a failing DIM, or maybe mixed and matched memory modules or other memory related issues, you've got that, of course, on the board. Uh, an update as well is we've got dual front USB 3 front uh, headers on the board. Yay. So that's a great option, especially for chassis uh, where you're now seeing four uh, front USB 3 uh, connections, or especially in the content creation community, a lot of guys like using that secondary one for high speed card reader. So, you know, when you're uh, capturing all your camera or your audio uh, feeds and things like that, you can go ahead and just yeah, click like the front panel. Right yeah, High speed, yeah, exactly. So that's an, another great option that you have there. So as we move here, we're of course going to see just one of the six pin, uh, uh, four pin fan headers that are on the board as a total. And that brings us to, of course, fan experts. So, um, you know, for this generation on all pretty much all our performance oriented boards above the Z97A, they all feature fan expert three. So especially in a workstation oriented environment or in an environment where you can have a lot of expansion capabilities for multiple GPUs or uh, multiple capture cards, especially devices that can produce a lot more heat, having extensive fan control functionality I think is really critical. And so we are maintaining the ability that every single one of these headers has three pin and four pin control support just like in previous generations, along with that full automatic fan tuning that we had in uh, Fan Expert 2. But for this generation, we're giving you the ability to control the output signal. So now you're going to have the ability to either do DC or PWM output control per each one of these headers. So that's really awesome because uh, we can use this little guy right here. So this is essentially a PWM fan splitter cable. So you can go ahead and connect that to one of the chassis fan headers and you can see you connect one, two, three, four more fans and then have those fans be powered by the actual Molex, so by your power supply. Um, but they could then all receive the same control signal from either the UEFI or the operating system. That's I, I think that's just awesome in terms of that flexibility. Now, in addition to that, one of the other really cool parts to that is, is that we also offer different temperature input mapping. So normally, all your fan headers respond to the CPU temperature, right? But now what they can do is they can respond to different points, such as the VRM, the motherboard temperature, the PCH, or there's also an optional temp sensor. So we've got this little guy right here. So you can go ahead and plug that into the board, and then you could put that behind any number of different sources. So you could imagine maybe putting this behind your graphics card, right? And then if you put that behind your graphics card, you use that PWM splitter that I talked about. Yep. And then, uh, you know, maybe side chassis fans... Mm -hmm. You could have three or four side chassis fans that are all then blowing 
only when it senses that ramp up in temperature because it's been placed behind your graphics card. But you could put it on your hard drive, you could put it in an ambient area of the chassis. Just a huge degree of flexibility that when you look at those total set of fan controls, it's really untouched. And on top of that, for this generation, we added um, even more control into the UEFI for having minimum, uh, middle, and maximum value points that you can adjust. Uh, as well as even full real-time fan calibration inside the UEFI so that if you want to run fan, advanced fan control even independent of the operating system Fan Expert 3 uh, within AI Suite 3, you can do that as well. It's pretty amazing you got it all into the UEFI like that. Yeah, it's, it was definitely, I'll tell you, it was really difficult along with also even putting in uh, the graphical fan tuning where we now have graphical fan tuning available to you inside the UEFI in the same way that we've had it in the operating system. Some really difficult stuff, but uh, overall really just adds to the experience that you can have it, how you can control and tweak and tune and configure the board, right? Uh, when we go over to storage connectivity, we've got a whole lot going on here. So of course you got PCH based SATA connectivity. Um, and then you've also, if we take a look right there on the side, you've got SATA Express. So I think uh, you, of them, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got two SATA Express ports. And uh, as you guys can see right there, we've got an example of what a SATA Express cable look like now. As you've noted, uh, of course you can use those as normal SATA 6G uh, ports if you're not using SATA Express. So you've got a total of four SATA ports that you have access to in the event that you want to have uh, SSDs or mechanical hard drives attached instead of SATA Express. Uh, and I think you've also got the little Hyper Express box there that um, yeah, right we here. have. Yep. So, it's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool little device there. So for you guys that want to be able to take advantage of SATA Express, we'll be coming out with this pretty shortly where you can put in two M.2 based SSDs or you can put in... Uh, two um, M SATA based SSDs that will hardware RAID them and you can go ahead and take advantage of uh, faster than single SSD performance by connecting that to the SATA Express base connection. In addition to that, an important point like all ASUS uh, Z97 boards that feature SATA Express, we also have full compliance with, uh, with SRIS, uh, which is, has to do with the signal reference clock uh, to be able to ensure the best performance for SATA Express. This is really important. You guys want to keep that in mind if you're interested in the long term of having the best SATA Express performance. So um, from there, you guys can also see that we've got M.2. So M.2, of course, we can support both PCIe as well as SATA based M.2 based devices. So either either option, of course, M.2 PCIe is going to be a much faster option than right. M.2 SATA, which is pretty much the same performance as a, a PCH gonna, based SATA device. Is that going to take up one of your SATA ports or is there extra already? No, no it doesn't look like there are. So there, uh, so this will actually be collated with the SATA ports. So you are correct. If yeah. you do use an M.2 SATA based device, it will be collated with the PCH based connectivity. So you do want to keep that in mind. Um, so overall though, tons of connections that you have, whether it's going to be serial ATA, SATA Express or M.2, you're good to go. Now as we move along from there, you're going to see that you've got even more connectivity and uh, one of those little buttons now down here you're going to see is uh, this guy right here. So you have um, some additional functionality right with your, your clear CMOS button. And I actually also missed over here where we've got uh, Dr. Power. Oh, yeah, Dr. Power, so, yeah. So Dr. Power is pretty cool because, of course, what this will allow you to do is receive notification when it's active about total power consumption um, and essentially reaching uh, a high level of power consumption that could effectively cause instability on your system. So what will happen is you'll receive a notification that says, hey, maybe you're hitting everything too hard. You could be actually uh, in a state where maybe your system may shut down and you may have a loss of instability or you may lose uh, whatever you're working on. So you'll receive a notification that maybe you should uh, cut off one of those applications. So it's a really uh, advanced function and feature that we have here to be able to ensure long-term stability. Now, moving down from here, you can see that we have a dual debug LED. It actually is pretty similar to what we have on the Deluxe. Now, traditionally, you see just a single debug LED, but with two, the benefit that we have here is, is that um, you can have more debug codes. So by having more debug codes, this gives you more granularity to know uh, what specifically might be causing your system to have the issue that's stopping it from posting or, or completing uh, the boot to the operating system. So this is a, a nice troubleshooting feature that we've added here for the WS, because especially you can imagine, right, with WS series boards, you have a higher level of complexity sometimes in the configuration. You might be running a GPU, uh, a RAID controller, multi-channel gigabit card, two or three HDMI capture cards, and then maybe like a sound card, right? So it's harder to know uh, which device might be causing an initialization issue. And with that, while we're not going to yet jump right off to the back I.O., you're going to see that there's a function that ties into the debug LED, which is going to be the Q-Log function. So Q-Log is awesome because what you can do is you can press that button, and when you press that button, it will go ahead and download a post report to a flash drive. So you can actually take a look at the entire postcode information to know what could be causing an issue with your system. I think it's a really awesome feature for you guys that need to be able to debug your system more effectively. That's pretty wild. 
So uh, down here, of course, we've got power and reset. And uh, of course, you can also uh, leverage our Thunderbolt uh, 2 uh, add-in card where you can just go ahead and drop that in, especially for you guys that are interested in content creation, want to be able to leverage, of course, that ultra-fast I.O. standard for you know being able to do on-the-fly image, video, music editing. You want to be able to outboard to you know, 4K monitors, all kinds of crazy cool stuff, have complex storage devices. Thunderbolt is the way to go. Now on the audio side, we've also done even some updates. So while it doesn't feature a full isolated audio path, we have gone ahead and incorporated an operational amplifier. We have a high-grade codec on the board, and it does also feature our DTS uh, sequencing technology for different types of uh, monitors. So whether you have in-ear monitors, over-the-ear headphones, or, or standard desktop speakers, when you go ahead and make a connection either to the front panel or to the line level out, you can select one of those uh, uh, playback mediums and it will go ahead and optimize an Oreo profile for those devices as well as we have conditional profiles for music, movies, and games. So you overall also have an improved sound experience on the WS series of motherboards as well. Now, if we move up from here, you're going to see that the cord board has tons of PCI expansion. A ridiculous amount. Which is really the hallmark of a WS series motherboard. Now, this is not just about GPUs. Of course, this motherboard supports three-way and four-way GPU configurations, whether it's Crossfire or SLI. But this is also really valuable to users that are looking for just a enhanced ability of being able to run complex add-in card configurations. So like I noted, you know, maybe multi-channel gigabit Ethernet cards, professional uh, SCSI or RAID controller cards, fiber channel cards, HDMI capture cards, you know, yeah. uh, input audio sequencing cards, rocket red accelerators, all kinds of just stuff, you have a huge amount of flexibility. And that gets us to another point, which is a hallmark of WS, that not only do these boards have microcode validation for Xeon-based CPUs, but we have enhanced option ROM support. You know, a lot of these devices that we just talked about, so an example like a complex um, SATA RAID controller card, you know, could cost, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars. You know, you want to be able to ensure that you could drop it in and have it work correctly. And this is something that we take a huge amount of time and effort on on WS boards to ensure that the option ROM, or essentially the firmware that initializes that device, is correctly acknowledged and works correctly on this board because you don't want to have to buy a complex device, add it into a board, and then have the board freeze up or lock or not be able to initialize it correctly. So this is really a hallmark for you guys that are in a more professional level of usage and want to be able to ensure great adding card compatibility. It's really a key focal point. Now, in addition, this board also has a 1394 FireWire header on here. So while it's a legacy connector and most enthusiasts don't actively use this, it's still utilized in the content creation community where there's been expensive... Uh, uh, expensive equipment invested into, you know, audio and video capture right. devices. So that's the reason why we also still maintain that and give you really robust connectivity. So whether it's Thunderbolt 1394, USB 3, even eSATA, which is also here on the back plane, we're really kind of complementing the entire ecosystem of connectivity that enthusiast class users need, especially for those more prosumer, like I said, content creation focus. Now, if we take a shift here, and we take a look at the back I.O. You can see, like I said, we're pretty stacked. We've got digital display connectivity. We've got the eSATA. We've got USB 3. And of course, with the USB 3, just like the front ports, we've got support for the USB 3 boost to improve performance for our flash drives, high-speed external SSDs, as well as we got support for USB Charger Plus. So you can even quick charge you know, your tablets or your smartphones because even prosumers have those devices, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, in addition to that, for the Intel NICs, um, like always on a WS board, we've got dual Intel NICs. Um, but for this generation, we've even improved upon it further. One of these is actually the LM series. So mm -hmm. the LM series is not only just a server workstation grade, but it has official Intel ProSet driver management support for server grade OSs. So for you guys that are running the Intel server OS, you actually have full official driver level support. So you have really not only uh, better performance, better throughput, lower CP utilization, uh, but for you guys that really appreciate the Intel NIC, have an unmatched class of management functionality to get better performance through the Intel ProSet for stuff like MSIX and RSS and a whole bunch of crazy networking technologies are really awesome that, you know, we don't we don't want to get me stuck on networking. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, here, <laughs> be here for four all, hours. Oh, yeah, I'll, like, be, I'll be here all day. Just going on the networking. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, of course, uh, we still keep the Turbo LAN so software support. So for you guys that want packet priority control uh, to be able to prioritize, you know, voice over IP, downloading, streaming, peer-to-peer, -peer, whatever it might be, specific applications, you can go in there and you can specifically map that to either one of these controllers or if you add in PCIe wireless adapter, USB wireless adapter, you're good to go. Uh, on the back there also, we uh, I forgot to note that we've got, of course, the USB BIOS flashback button. Mm -hmm. So, of course, for you guys that want to be able to go ahead and update uh, the UEFI chip, even with uh, no CPU, no memory, no graphics card, just the motherboard power, you can go ahead and do that.
It also works great as a recovery mechanism. You get like a surge, spike, sag, brown on the power line. Your system won't post. Once again, you can use that. And socketed ROMs, as always, are a great option because in worst case scenario, pop the guy out, contact your service department, get a new one sent out to you, pop it in, and you're good to go. And that's even another point. Historically, we don't talk about our warranties, but, you know, Tough is a five-year warranty. All the other boards are three-year warranty, including WS. But WS also features our, our, our ARS warranty policy, which means that we'll guarantee process the RMA within a 24-hour period uh, so that you get uh, the absolute minimi uh, minimized downtime and you also have advanced RMA support available to you as well, meaning that we'll send you the motherboard to replace uh, the board that you may have an issue or may have a failure even before you send the defective board back. So ultimately, we can really help to make sure that you have the absolute lowest amount of uh, downtime available to you. So as a whole, um, you know, we've got a couple of other last items that, of course, can uh, be tied in with that, give you guys even a better experience. So we've got the little NFC uh, Express box, which is great because it's also got a USB 3.0 hub built into it. So you guys that have, you know, smartphones and tablets with NFC, you can do things like automatically log into your system, password, and login information. You can go ahead and quick launch multiple applications. You can go ahead and transfer photos wirelessly. You can even stream video directly from your mobile device to the desktop. You can stream Bluetooth enabled audio from your device also to your desktop. So some really awesome functions and features that we have with the NFC. And we've even got Qi wireless charging. So for you guys that once again have uh, wireless charging support on your mobile device, you can go ahead and use that guy, quick charge your device by just simply placing it on there and you're good to go. And even on the software suite, we've even done even more that we haven't even talked about there um, and have great features, especially for you guys in this segmentation where I think monitoring is even more important. Mm. We've got push notice, which I know you were really digging yeah, in. That'd we'll, be fun. we'll have a demo on, which allows you to go ahead and get a remote notification even outside your local network of temperature, fan speed, and voltages. Uh, so that's an awesome new feature that we have. In addition, you've got Media Streamer, which is a really great function. So you can stream any of your music, movies, or images from your system in the internet or extranet environment straight to your mobile device um, or home cloud, which allow you to mount the, maybe the, the work volume that you have. Maybe you need to share that with colleagues or friends. Uh, you can go ahead and mount that directly in the cloud, have access to that volume, and you can even stream directly from that volume. So, All right, I've got one question for you. There's a little jumper down here. Uh, over voltage jumper. Old school, man. Yeah, actually, most of actually our motherboards all feature an over uh, voltage jumper. It's really designed for very extremely high voltage levels, so like up to like 2.1 volts. Um, but in normal situations, um, yeah. you don't need to utilize it. Uh, and that actually brings up, I think, actually one last good point that, you know, a lot of people always ask once again about overclocking on the entire range of boards, just like we've messaged with any of the other Z97 boards. You're going to have an outstanding overclocking experience. This board, like we noted, actually has the absolute highest in design that we have from even power delivery section. And uh, the, tu the tuning topology and the trace layout and everything goes in line with that. So whether you're going to be doing 4.6, 4.7, 4.8 or greater, high DRAM frequency, this is going to be a monster board. And plus it also features... Uh, along with our mainstream series, it's the only other boards that we have that feature the auto tuning technology and the five-way optimization complete. So you can have not only a great manual overclocking experience, but an outstanding automatic overclocking experience as well. You think this board might be something that we see in like some crazy overclocking competition where they're using LN2 or liquid helium or something like that? You, if you actually look at the community and look at the historical um, kind of posts that have actually been out there, WS has been utilized by actually professional overclockers because they've been built to such a high standard and they've offered high-end multi-GPU capabilities with great VRM design. So so WS has actually had a long history, you know, like as I was noting, in terms of the, uh, you know, um, LN2 overclocking community and extreme overclockers, you know, guys like Brian Y, like Fugger, Giorgio Primo have really pushed our boards in the same way that we've pushed our ROG motherboards to be able to have amazing overclocks and take advantage of the designs and the expansion capabilities and, and everything the boards has to offer. And that equally shows you, like I was talking about, that, uh, you know, whether you're going to be doing gaming, content creation, general productivity, um, in the same way that our mainstream boards have a great deal of flexibility, WS is an outstanding foundation. But as we've talked about with all the features here, it's really also tailor-made towards a user that can appreciate more professional usage and uh, more, more flexibility and connectivity and expansion. You guys may notice that the screen is clickable right now. You can click on things, and you probably should be clicking on things right now. Uh, if you guys want to know a little bit more about some of the, uh, uh, some of the ASUS exclusive stuff, like some of the different you know, software packages we talked about, some of the different you know, uh, hardware that we've talked about, go ahead and click on the screen and you guys can check out all that. Plus you can check out all the other lines. So we will see you guys in those videos. Mm -hmm.